As I prepared to enter the final boss fight with the sorceress, with 146 eggs and 43 lives and 6,800 gems, I thought to myself, I'm a motherfucking dragon, bitch! Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, my AVG popped up and told me my PlayStation emulator was a threat, and I have no idea why. It was very, very strange and sad and mysterious. But anyway, how's everybody doing? Today's gonna be my last day recording stuff for Spyro, unless the bonus world goes really horribly, but... <laughs> Time to kick some sorceress, but... Yeah, Agent 9 doesn't ramble, he just gets right to it. And you have the very first world hub world music playing for the final boss fight! Well, Sorceress, you can move whenever you want. No, seriously. I'll just wait here. I'll just stand here. It's cool. No, okay, I'm not gonna waste your time that much. Basically, uh, she won't attack you until you move. Kind of like a lot of other bosses in the Spyro games, actually. I'm pretty sure Gulp did that, too. She can shoot fireballs which she really seems to like to do today. Or she'll do this attack where she, like, shoots, like, thunderballs up into the air. It's really easy to avoid. Eventually, as you do more damage to her, it gets harder and harder to avoid. And the only way you can damage the sorceress is with cannonballs. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Get away from me. <laughs> yeah. She'll, she'll do that. Oh, boy. Ooh, lag. Ew, thorns. Yeah. And I am so bad at this part of the fight. Um with the cannon. Yeah, that went right over her head there, didn't it? But fortunately, everything after this part is not nearly as difficult. Um, you gotta kind of lead your shots. And I just, what I, you should be doing is just spamming and hoping to hit her. And I could not do this. This is another thing that speedrunners do that I don't understand how they can freaking do. Fight the sorceress and then, like, get one round cannonballs, like, on their very first one. Okay, so... We're done with the cannon phase. Fortunately, you only have to hit her twice. And as you can see now, there's a shit ton more of those thunderballs that she shoots out every time she does this attack. Fortunately, it's still more dangerous, or uh, the fireballs are still more dangerous because they home in on you. Now, the other thing that she can do, which she, we actually haven't seen her do yet, is um, she can, like, if she gets close enough to you, you might see it here somewhere in the tank phase, which is a lot easier to hit her with, by the way. Oh, okay. And unless you miss, barely, you, like, graze. Apparently, I, she thinks I'm playing Toho here, because she's, like, trying to get grazed to boost her score. But anyway, uh, she can, like, wave her... She can do a melee attack, basically. Well, she, she keeps... She has this fetish for going to the left. And how did that miss her? That, like, went through her arm. Oh, my goodness. Hitboxes. How do they work? This is not a pro... <laughs> this is not at all a pro fight. This LP is falling apart at the very seams in the very last few episodes. It's like, oh my god, Harbor Speedway, man, that was terrible. I can't believe I messed up that badly. Fortunately, she's being nice here. And eventually, when you get her down to half health, then we get to the UFO phase, which is uh, something that we've never seen before. But yeah, the tanks that we use there are kind of like similar to, but different from the tanks we did in uh, Haunted Tomb because you can't do lob shots or anything with that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get hit by the fireball. But this is the UFO, and you can go up and down. You have unlimited ammo. And it's pretty cool. She can be kind of hard to hit with this. Whoa! That went right through her! Does she have that much invincibility? Her invincibility frames freaking saved her from getting that hit. Because if I had hit her, she would have jumped in the air, and then she wouldn't done done her melee attack, but, oh well, at least we got to show that off now. Yeah, basically, this is the biggest threat to doing the melee <laughs> Freaking, what the heck? Now, eventually, if you do get your life low enough, Agent 9 will start dropping sheep, which is really bad if you're trying to speedrun, because that means that, oh my goodness, those... You whore! You fucking blue dinosaur whore! Oh my god, I hate you so much. Why does she remind me of the grandma from Spirited Away? Or, um, the sorceress from that one? Like, <clears throat> it's been a really long time since I've seen that movie, so the, her name... I think they just called her Yubaba in the movie, but I'm not 100% sure. I have no idea why she did... Oh my goodness! Spyro, fucking hit with your things, please. <laughs> God, I hope we'll have enough time to do the Sparks World. 
Uh, yeah, yes! Fucking get wrecked, sorceress. Please. Okay. There we go. One more. One more hit. One more hit is all we need. Please. There. Fucking thank you. Well, we'll still have time to do the Sparks World. The Sparks World shouldn't take too long. They usually never do. And even if so, this is basically... Well, it's not the finale because we still have the bonus world to do. But this is kind of like the last thing, so I don't mind if this is, turns out to be a long episode. George. You saved George. And that's our 147th egg. But we still have two eggs to get. So does that mean there are two eggs in the Sparks world? Or, or what? And uh-oh. As you can see, she kind of survived. And just like at the start, this cutscene gets cut off at the bottom, or the title. Spyro, you've just defeated the sorceress, rescued the dragon eggs, and restored freedom to the lot of the lost dragon worlds. What do you plan to do ne next? Hmm? Perhaps a nice vacation in Dragon Shores? Hmm? You're a real comedian sometimes, Bentley. <laughs> uh, you know, I still have to find the rest of the dragon eggs. Plus, Hunter seems to Hunter seems to have disappeared again, so I should go make sure he's not in more trouble. You haven't seen him, have you? Huh? Me? Oh no, no. If I do happen to encounter him, however, I will most certainly inform you immediately. <laughs> this lag is killing me, I don't know. It's really bad all of a sudden, but I'll just leave it in. I don't want to re-record this. Because it's almost funnier the way it skips around. It's a funny thing, Spyro. I adjusted Avalar's por portals to take me to the Dragon Worlds, but somehow I ended up here. Uh, maybe my coordinate tables are out of date. By a thousand years. That would explain why the book was so cheap. So, now that you're done saving the world again, are you going to visit me in Avalar? Sure, Alora, but I still have to find the rest of the eggs and, well, Hunter's disappeared again. Did you say, Hunter? Well, hey, I can help. I just saw him sneak off with... Uh, uh, -huh. uh Agent Nine, isn't that a Rhinoc over in those bushes? A uh, Rhinoc? Ooh, let me at him. You want a piece of me, Rhinoc boy? Eat laser punk? Come on now, no fair hiding. Uh, I'm sure Hunter is in good hands. But I mean, I'm sure he will turn up soon. I promise you'll come visit Avalar soon, okay? Of course, you remember Alora from the previous game. She manages to show up a little bit, too. Billy in the wall. Yeah, we gotta visit all of the partners, so we're gonna go see Sheila now. Have you seen Hunter Sheila? No. No, I now, have How many times have I told you I told you not to tease that moose? It was, it was Billy's idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that true, Billy? Hold that thought, Billy. Thought, Billy. Spyro, great to see ya. Hi, Sheila. I've been looking for Hunter or Hunter all day. Have you seen him? <laughs> Sorry, Spyro. Hunter made Hunter made me promise not to tell you where they went. Say, <laughs> you didn't hear anything from me. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Yeah, I think you can see where this is going. If you know what I mean. Yeah, you can see the picture. It gives everything away. You call that romance? That was nothing. Yeah, and Sergeant Bird's here shooting off fireworks. This is a sad sight, Sparks. Another noble warrior falls victim to the plague of love. Just look away. Well, I guess we'll have to find the rest of the eggs by ourselves. Come on, Spyro. Take a little break. Let's watch the show. Show. So you get that, like, credity cutscene. Sparks flies in front of the moon and everything. And boy, that was weird. My frames per second numbers in the upper left-hand corner of the video just, like, disappeared there for a second. And I'm so sorry about all that, like, happening. Wait a second, that guy's name was Algier, which was the name of that guy who was in the freaking haunted tomb that I was like, what the hell kind of a name is that? Well, that makes sense. 
Stephanie Duke. Wait, Duke was the name of one of the dragon eggs. Huh. Well, I guess it is kind of a common name. But anyway, it's the point that I was trying to get to before I got interrupted by the credits here. Which are doing the same thing that they've done in previous Spyros, where they just kind of fly through all of the all the worlds that you've been to. There is another credit sequence, too, that we have to sit through and watch, so you'll be seeing two credits in this game. But yeah, um, so funnily enough, there is one more Spyro game that I've played and owned and um, didn't immediately sell off the second I played it, which was what happened with Enter the Dragonfly when I got that on the GameCube. That game was so awful, I like, sold it right away. <laughs> God, even the credits are lagging, jeez. But that game was for the Game Boy Advance. It's called Spyro Season of Ice. I think I, at one point, had Season of Flame, too, but I... I don't know. Season of Ice was actually not terrible, but it was a lot different, and it was kind of hard to find your way around. It had its frustrations, and it definitely wasn't a great game. And I'm not even trying to say that this is this is a great game. I mean, like, this game has its problems, too, but it's definitely nostalgic for me, way more so than the Game Boy Advance ones. Um, and I like it. I think it's held up better than a lot of other games from this generation. I think it looks better than Mario 64. I think it plays better than Mario 64. I think the level design is better as a whole than Mario 64, but that's just me, and I am biased because of nostalgia, so I'll I'll be free to admit that. But in Spyro Season of Ice, um, Bianca actually returns as a main character that helps you, and basically she's in every world telling you, like, oh, you need this many uh, fairies to that you... Because all the fairies have been trapped in ice, and she's like, well, if you rescue this many fairies, I can open up this portal for you to get to the next world. Yeah, and the Rhinox return in that game, too. And it's it's kind of spin-off-y more so than, than anything. I probably won't LP it, like, probably not ever, unless I really, really run out of games to do, and it's like... Because, I don't know, I don't want to do things game. Was that guy's name Flo de Ray? <laughs> Jeez, that's crazy. But anyway, uh, man, if I if you cut the words "but anyway" out of my vocabulary, the rest of the LP would sound like it would sound like this. That's what the LP would sound like. It would just be like it'd just be silence. But anyway, <laughs> I really hate doing uh, LPs blind. So eventually, uh, if I continue to do this, maybe in a couple of years I'll run out of games to play. And then I might go back and do Spyro Season of Ice, but, so don't get your hopes up. And if you do want to watch it, like, if you're curious, um, you can watch, like, the first couple of levels, and then that's really all you need to watch, because the rest of the game is really repetitive. And it's not even that long, so just, you're really not missing anything. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that this is the last good Spyro game. And yeah, um, in terms of my next LP, as soon as I finish doing this recording session, which will hopefully take me through the bonus world of Spyro 3, I will um, I will get started on Mega Man X4, and I'll put the first episode of Mega Man X4 up, and then I'll alternate with uh, Fire Emblem every day. And I kind of explained this in the vlog that I put up the other day, that um, if Fire Emblem is by itself, it's just going to get really boring really quickly, because that game has so much dialogue, and it's so long, and... I'm probably going to want to show off hard mode as well after I do a normal playthrough. Because the thing about Fire Emblem is that there are two different story modes, and there's actually some pretty significant differences between the two. Um, so you have Elowood's story and Hector's story, and Lynn's story is actually like a prologue type deal, so I'll show that once and then do it again off screen because it's only 10 chapters long, so it's not that bad. It just takes a couple of hours to get through it by myself. And then, uh, so after I do Elowood's, story, which is like the default story, I'm going to try to do Hector's hard mode, which is a stupidly hard, like really, really ridiculously hard game, and I've never beaten Hector's hard mode before, but I'm going to try to do it, and uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. It's, it's going to be scary, and I will be using different characters and stuff, and I'll have you know, you know me, I never run out of things to talk about, so... I'm not really concerned about the commentary, I'm more so concerned about, like, <laughs> staying sane throughout it, and, like, not not wanting to give up, because I've tried it a couple times before, and it is, it is really, really hard. 
And plus, if you're trying to do a, uh, yeah, the Spyro Trilogy, this was originally supposed to be the last game. Until they sold it to Universal, or, um... Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's insomniacgames.com. I don't know if that website is still up, but I think that's um, the one that I mentioned in that other part about Dino Mines is where it is. So anyway, it plonks us back out into the overworld here. I have no idea how long this recording's been because of all the cutscenes and the credity stuff, and if our game would stop lagging now, it's, that would be nice. So let's get ourselves back up to full, full sparks. Hello, lizards. Thank you. Thank you for dying. Okay. D oh, money bags. What are you doing out here? Don't worry, Spyro. I won't be needing any more of your money. Now, now, don't look so surprised. I found one of the dragon eggs, and I'm going to sell it for a fortune back in Avalar. Uh, uh oh. Uh, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, I've got to be going now. Uh, toodles. Are you ready for the best part of the game? Yeah! Fucking take that, money bags! I'm gonna fucking shove my horns up your ass! I'm gonna sodomize you for stealing all of my money! Ugh! Ugh! Gotcha! And he just, like, vomits. He shits out all these 10 and 25 gems. You can flame him, too. You can set his ass on fire. You can stab his ass with your face. That's, uh, that God, that's hardcore. Stab his ass with your face. As I remember one time when I was a kid, I got so excited doing this that I actually fell off the ledge and died. And basically, he'll just run around in circles, and after you hit him a certain number of times, you, um, he gives you the egg, he, like, gives up. Basically, the more you pay him in the game, the longer this takes. So if you're speedrunning this, you skip as many money bags as possible, and then you only have to hit him a couple of times to get your money back. But as you can see here, like, God, look at all of the gems we're getting. 13,000?! 14,000! We're soon enough, we're gonna get to the, um, we should get 14,800. So a couple more times will, will be all it takes, but this is our revenge. Take that, money bags. Drat. Double drat. Drat, 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 drat. Oh, I never knew dragons were so fast. That's it, I give up. I'm retiring to Spooky Swamp to become a haiku poet. <laughs> Well, you were actually pretty good at it, so who knows? Well, yeah. So that was that's something that I've been looking forward to. That's like the one thing about this game that I always look forward to doing. Always. There are some things that in every game that you look forward to doing. Some things that you aren't looking forward to doing. If I do do Hector Hard Mode, heh <laughs> do do. There is one chapter that is, in particular, is really scaring me. Just before you kick the sorceress's big fat ugly butt. She built a factory to make robotic bugs to fight Sparks. But I don't think they're any match for him. Alright, yeah, we'll do Bug Bot Factory, and then uh, we'll finish this off. We'll call it an episode. It'll probably be kind of long, but that's okay. But yeah, this, the, the the thing about Hector Hard Mode is, and I guess I can mention this a little bit offhandedly, in this LP, just while I'm thinking about it, is that like, bosses are positioned differently. There are actually even some ex extra chapters that you don't get to go through if you're in Hellowood mode. Some of the chapters that you do go through are different. Like, he has a different chapter 11. Um, he has a different chapter where he grabs the legendary weapon. So, there's definitely differences. And that, if I do do both of the stories... God, I keep... I need to stop saying doo-doo, hee-hee, -doo, <laughs> because it's making me giggle, because I'm 12, apparently. Um, but that'll make the LP stupidly long. Like, that could make it be from 50 parts to, like, 100 parts. 100 parts of, like, 20-minute episodes. I mean, like, granted, that's still nowhere near as long as a game like Nino Kuni, which is like, jeez. And there are ways to make it go faster. Like, eventually I'll get to the point where I cut out the battle animations, or I'll only show certain characters' animations, or I'll just turn them on for the boss fights, or... I don't know. Um, but I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll try to make it the best LP that I can. I just, wow, why am I... Whoa, okay, hang on, Sparks. You need to calm yourself and get the game to stop lagging. So I'm actually going to pause the recording really quickly, and I'm going to see what time it is on the recording, and then I'm going to, like, restart it, and hopefully there will be no lag. Okay, I'm back. So apparently we were only at, like, a 19-minute recording or so, which isn't that bad. I can live with that. And um, basically, as long as this recording gets done before the half-hour mark, I'll be I'll be happy. Um, 
Geez, Sparks, why did you lock yourself in a position that was, uh, not so great? Oh, boy, there's this part. Yeah, this level, like most Sparks Worlds, is not that long. I actually think that it's easier than the previous one, just from a, um, like a mechanical standpoint. And it's easier to find my... I For some reason, I think it's easier for me to find my way around this Sparks World than it is to find my way around Spider Town, which is the second Sparks World. Now, if I can remember what key this one goes to, that would be great. Oh, don't worry, I'll get those gems back in a, in a second. Yeah, I just want to get that... Okay, that was exactly what I wanted to do. Because if you do use the uh, shield, then the big enemy generators, the guys that, like, spawn the bugs... They'll die, like, in one hit from the shield, so... That just makes it a bit easier. Now I can come back here and pick up these gems! There are only three gems, but we need all the gems we can get to open up the... the door to the final... to the final bonus world. 15,000! It's crazy to think that there's that many gems. It's even crazier to think that Moneybags stole that much of our money, if you think about it. Because we had 6,800 gems going into the fight with the Sorceress, and then we jumped up to... <laughs> An extra... How many gems even was that? Like, 8,000 gems or something like that? Something insane? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess it was 8,000 gems, exactly. Because you ended both values with an 800. Yeah, give me that key, you stupid stoop. Are there gems down here? Oh, no, but there are gems down here. For some reason, I thought this was the, uh... The path that leads to the next part of the level. This is one of the, uh, things about the Sparks Worlds that I always like... Um... This is my favorite Sparks World, by the way. I just think it's the coolest, and it's the most well-designed. Um, but the big room that's in here is, like, another one of those things that always makes me just think about this game. Like, that's such a Spyro thing to do, if you know what I mean. And over here's the boss, but we need more keys to get there. More keys, more keys. We're not playing Zelda. At least not yet, so... Oh, gotta get this guy out of the way. I think it's kind of cool how they uh, have bugs that are just spawning bugs how the enemy generators start moving. It feels like a challenge, but it d never, like, really ramps up that badly in difficulty. So for this part, you just want to, like, sit far enough away that neither of them can hurt you. And if you hang out back here, then the bugs won't start chasing you either. But as soon as you get down here, you're going to want to make sure you get these guys. Yeah, we're already almost done with this, so... Like I said, not too bad. But this was another place where the that one speedrun I mentioned in Harbor Speedway lost a lot of time because he died, like, right over here. And then he forgot to grab this key, so we went back up to the boss door and was like, oh shit, I don't have the key, and now we have 15,000 gems! Would you give me this fucking key, please? Thank you. Alright. And the boss here is not that bad. He's actually a lot like the Chinese dragons that we fought, the mini-bosses from Fireworks Factory. Because he's a big centipede! Oh, he's scary, and he shoots poison needles at us or something. <laughs> the robot centipede used poison sting. It's super effective. But basically, you just got to get inside him. He doesn't actually damage you if you touch him. You just got to kind of stay away from his head. But And eventually, he'll split off into two, and that makes it, I guess, marginally more difficult. But Sparks can fortunately take damage. He can tank hits like a pro. And these guys go down pretty quickly. Um, even though there's two of them running around. One of them usually just runs around to the outside. I usually get the one that has, um, that has more life first, or more segments. Any boss with segments, and it makes me think of this boss, and the Chinese dragons from Spyro 3. They always will, they always have and they always will, is kind of what I was trying to say there. Sometimes they move a little unpredictably, but I guess I could be using that, since I have it. <laughs> I probably could have used that a lot earlier, and it would have gone a lot faster. So we got Annabelle, who is the 149th dragon egg. I mean, like, well, there's no order. It's like, no one egg is a particular ranking egg, a particular ordinal, if you want to use the, the fancy term. That last egg must have had some extra magic, because it gave Sparks two new abilities. Now he can break open treasure chests, and using the Atlas, he can warp you to any level. Just select the level you want, and press the square button. Well, both of those are kind of useless since we got everything before the Sorceress, but as I mentioned earlier, speedrunners like that because it's, uh, it's very helpful in the run. The sooner you get that, the better. Now, all you gotta do is get up here, and we glide over here to where you have all of these lizards, and the super bonus round is finally open to us. So next time on Let's Play Spyro 3.
we're going to start working on that. We're going to get to town, and we're probably not going to do it in one episode, but it'll be a good time, so I'll see you then. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series. Thank you for watching.